Today we're going to solve an integral that looks absolutely gorgeous and believe me the result looks even better and we're going to solve it using Laplace transforms. So first up we have something noteworthy and that is the fact that the cosine of x as well as x squared plus 1 these two are even functions. So let's call this integral i and because we're integrating an even function from negative to positive infinity instead of integrating from negative infinity to positive infinity we could just integrate from 0 to positive infinity and double the result. So we're interested in the integral from 0 to infinity of the cosine of x divided by x squared plus 1. Now we can define an integral function i of t as the integral from 0 to infinity of the cosine of t times x divided by x squared plus 1. So we've introduced a parameter t as the uh, as part of the argument of our cosine function. And we're about to apply the Laplace transform to this function i of t. So the Laplace transform of i of t is the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative s times t times the integral function i of t. And we're integrating with respect to t. Now if I expand this function here, we know that it is in fact the integral from 0 to infinity of the cosine of t times x divided by x squared plus 1 integrated with respect to x. Now notice first up one thing that this uh, exponential term here is independent of x. So we can shift it inside this integral. So we now have a double integral of e to the negative st times the cosine of tx divided by x squared plus 1 integrated first with respect to x and then with respect to t. Now something that could be very useful here is that if we can switch up the order of integration and we can do that, we can do that in this case because if you look at this part of the integrand uh, we have a continuous function of both x and t and if you consider this damping factor, the exponential term, it doesn't raise any concerns about continuity or convergence. So yes, Fubini's theorem applies here and by Fubini's theorem, theorem we can uh, switch up the order of integration and we're now integrating with respect to t first and then with respect to x. So e to the negative st times the cosine of tx divided by x squared plus 1. And what is the utility of this switch up using Fubini's theorem? Well, because of this switch up, we first of all note, notice one thing, that if we're integrating with respect to t first, then this x squared plus 1 term is a constant. So you can take it out of the t integral, and we're now integrating from 0 to infinity e to the negative s times t times the cosine of tx with respect to t. So if I just enclose this in some curly braces, we notice immediately that this term is simply the Laplace transform of the cosine of tx. So we all know what that works out to, right? So using our trusted tables for Laplace transforms, we find that the Laplace transform of the cosine of t times x. Now remember, x is a constant in this case. x is a constant in this case because we're integrating with respect to t. So that means we now have s divided by s squared plus x squared. And this is our new function that we're integrating with respect to x only. So now, finally, the s terms are constants. So with the s terms being constants and we only have to integrate with respect to x, all that's left now is to perform a partial fraction decomposition so that we can have something to integrate pretty easily. And uh, the partial fraction decomposition here is actually pretty straightforward because you don't have a mixture of linear and quadratic terms in the variable x. You only have quadratic terms. So because you only have quadratic terms, this is equivalent to the case of having only linear terms. So we have to determine a and b, where we have a by x squared plus 1 plus b by x squared plus s squared. So fast forward to the point in time where we have the partial fraction decomposition x squared plus 1 here and x squared plus s squared here. Anyway, since we fast forwarded to that point in time where we have the partial fraction decomposition, we have s by s squared minus 1 as a uh, factored out term. And in the parentheses, we have 1 by x squared plus 1 uh, minus 1 by x squared plus s squared. And 
this is our partial fraction decomposition. So now we can get back to integrating with respect to x. And remember, the s terms are constants here. So this is just a factored out constant multiple. And we were integrating from 0 to positive infinity. So this was the Laplace transform of the function i of t. And on the right hand side, we're left with s by s squared minus 1 times the inverse the inverse tangent of x minus um, 1 by s times the inverse tangent of x by s. And the limits of integration are 0 and positive infinity. So in the limit as x approaches infinity, the inverse tangent of x approaches pi by 2. So you have pi by 2 and the zeros will just give you zeros, so ignore them. So you have pi by 2 minus 1 by s times, the pi, times a pi by 2. So we can factor out pi by 2 here, and we also have a factor of s by s squared minus 1, and we're left with 1 minus 1 by s, which can also be written as s minus 1 divided by s. So the s terms just cancel out, and notice that since s squared minus 1 is just the product of s minus 1 and s plus 1, these terms cancel out, and you're left with pi by 2 times the reciprocal of s plus 1, and that is the Laplacian of our integral function i of t. And now to recover our integral function, we're going to need the inverse Laplace transform. So by using the inverse Laplace transform, we see that we've, we have, uh, we finally have back the integral function i of t on the left, and on the right, uh, pi by 2 is just a constant and the inverse Laplace transform of 1 by s plus 1 is e to the negative 1 times t, which is t. So already the, the results are looking really good. They, they're starting to look really good. So this would be a very good time to like and subscribe. Anyway, remember what we were looking for. We were looking for the integral uh, from negative to positive infinity of the cosine of x divided by x squared plus 1. And this was just the case of our integral function i of t with t equal to 1. And we have to multiply the result by 2 because of the uh, even function thing that we did back in the uh, back at the start of the video. So plugging in t equals 1 and multiplying by 2, we get a beautiful result of pi by e. So yeah, that looks absolutely gorgeous. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you. See you next time.